Confident intervals for the mean. The central limit theorem, or CLT, states that the larger the sample size, the more normal the distribution of sample means become. So the central limit theorem is central to the concept of statistical inference because it permits us to draw conclusions about the population based strictly on sample data without knowing about the distribution of the underlying population. Working with confident intervals, we have a point of estimate, and the point of estimate is a single value used to estimate the population parameter. So when we talk about a point of estimate, it could be the mean of the population, it could be the proportion of the population, a standard deviation, etc. The interval estimate is a range of numbers around that point of estimate within which the parameter is believed to fall. It's also called a confident interval. Confident level, denoted lowercase c, is the probability that the interval estimate contains the parameter. Typical confident levels are 95%, 99%. So the level of confidence will be a percentage. When we're talking about confident intervals, key point is the confident level states how sure we are that the confident interval we'll ca we calculate contains the true population value. So working with confident intervals, the formula for a confident interval is going to be around that point of estimate, and we're going to add and subtract our critical value, our z value, and that z value will be based on our level of confidence times the standard error. And the standard error is known as the margin of error. It accounts for the fluctuation of means from sample to sample. So in a confident interval, the range of values above and below the sample statistic is called the margin of error, and we denote it with a capital E. Our formula for the margin of error is made up of the critical value Z that is associated to the confident level times our standard deviation divided by the square root of our sample size. So that critical value, or the Z value for our level of confidence, is known as the critical value. It is the value from a standard normal table that gives you a tail probability. So it's a normal distribution table that finds our Z values, or we can use the calculators to find this value. So the level of confidence, or C, is the probability that the interval estimate contains the population parameter. So the C is the area under the standard normal curve between our two critical values. Our critical values are those z-scores. So the area under the curve will give us our critical values. But in order to find the critical values, you, the area needs to be shaded all the way to the left. And because it's between two z values, you need to find what that tail equals. So what we know about a normal distribution curve is we know that the total area under the curve equals 1. And if the total area under the curve equals 1, in order to find the remaining areas in the tail, we have to take 1 minus our level of confidence or our probability for the level of confidence. Once you have that, you need to divide it by 2 because there's two tails. So that tail is going to equal our 1 minus our level of confidence divided by 2. So here's an example. Finding the critical value z given that our level of confidence is 90%. 
So what we know here is the shading under the curve is equal to 0 0.90. Because remember, probability and area are the same thing. So the area under the curve between our two critical values is equal to 0 0.90. Now, I can look up 0 0.90 and find a z-score, but that won't be the z-score for this interval because in order to find a z-score, it's always represented that the area is shaded all the way to the left. And because there's a piece missing, I need to find that piece and add it to the area I already have. So to find that piece, I'm ta taking 1 minus the level of confidence and I will get 0 0.10 or 10%. And then I need to take that and divide it by two because I have two tails. So that tail to the left is equal to 0 0.05 or the area for that tail is 0 0.05 or 5%. So now to find the, the critical values, I'm gonna be using our calculator Either area is going to give me the critical value, one's going to give me the negative critical value, and the other is going to give me the positive critical value. So when I do the evaluation of this, I'm going to find that my critical values for this level of confidence is going to be a negative 1.645 and a positive 1.645. So once you find the one, the other one is just its opposite. So if you just did the 0 0.05, you would get the negative 1.645, and then the other z value in that interval, the other critical value in that would be the, the opposite of that, which is the one, positive 1 1.645. Pause and try. So you should have gotten our critical value is a negative 1.28 or positive 1.28. Pause and try. So in this case, you should have gotten its uh, critical values is a negative 2.17 or positive 2.17. So here's the formula for a confident interval for the population. The interval is going to be made up of the sample mean minus RR plus RR. The probability that the confident interval contains our true mean or our population mean is based on the level of confidence that is given. Assuming the estimation process is repeated a large number of times. So to start by identifying your level of confidence, the sample mean, your standard deviation, and the sample size. And we're going to be doing this in our calculators. So once you've pulled out that information, we're going to be entering it into our calculator. To find the interval, for, for the Z interval, you're going to go to your stat key and you're going to arrow over to test and you're going to choose the Z interval. And in most calculators, it's the number seven option. Now you're going to have to arrow down until you get to that number seven option, but make sure you're using Z interval and not the Z test. Then you're going to see this screen. In this screen, you might have the data highlighted, so you're going to need to make sure that your stat is highlighted. To do that, you're going to arrow over to stat and hit enter, and it will highlight the stat button. Once that's highlighted, you can enter in all the data. So in this case, you see the symbol for our standard deviation, and you'll put that 1.5 in you see the X bar, and that represents our mean, so you'll put in the 12.3. Then you see N here, and you're going to put in the 50 in our N, and the, then you see C level, and in this case, you strictly put in the confident level, which is that 0 0.90. So you don't have to incorporate the tail in this menu option. The calculator already does it for you. Then you have the enter, hit the enter button and you will have your interval on your screen. So the interval or our confident interval here for a 
90% level of confidence would be 11.5 or 11.951 comma 12.649. So we can do it in our calculators and that's how we're going to do it in here. It can also be written like the formula is written, where you have the mean between the two less than symbols. So the confident inter interval is either written with parentheses and a comma, or it can be written between the two less than symbols with our symbol for the population mean. Pause and try. So you should have gotten a confident interval of 9.6 seven eight to eleven point three two two or again if you wrote it as an interval between our two less than symbols this is what it would look like so now let's do a true example of what we would be doing when we're finding confident intervals we have a college admission director wishes to estimate the mean age of all students currently enrolled in a random sample of 20 students, the mean average is found to be 22.9 years. From the past studies, the standard deviation is known to be the 1.5 years, and the population is normally distributed. It's asking us to construct a 90% confident interval of the population mean age. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just identify my level of confidence, the mean that's given in the our standard deviation and our sample size. In this case, we see our level of confidence is that 0.90 or 90%. Our mean is the 22.9. Our standard deviation is 1.5. And our sample size is 20. We're going to use the same menu option. We're going to go to Stat Test. We're going to choose number 7, which is that Z interval, and we're going to enter in all this data. Again, always make sure that that stat is highlighted, and then we're going to enter this data, and we find that our, our interval would be between 22.348 to 23.452. Pause and try. So you should have gotten an interval between 98.06 and 98.34. Pause and try. So you should have gotten uh, 144.85 to 155.15. So when we're asked to find a point of estimate, our mean, and the margin of error from a confident interval, to do that, you're going to take, if you're given a confident interval, you're going to take the upper limit plus the lower limit and divide it by 2. That will give us our mean or our population mean. And to find our R, you're going to take the upper limit and subtract the lower limit and divide it by 2. That will give us our R. So let's do an example here. We're given a confident interval. We're asked to find the margin of error and the sample mean given the confident interval. So here we go. To find the mean, you have to take the upper plus the lower and divide by 2. So we take the 14.8 plus the 12 and divide it by 2, and we find that the mean for this interval is 13.4. And then we need to find our R. To find the R, you're going to do the upper minus the lower and divide by 2. So in this interval, our R would be 1.4. Pause and try. So you should have gotten our mean is 25.88 and the R here is 4.27. Pause and try. So you should have gotten our mean is 3.16 and our R is 0 .016. So finding sample size. Given a confident level and a margin of R, the minimum sample size N needed to estimate the population mean is found by using this formula. And the formula consists of our critical value, and that critical value is found by our level of confidence. It's this 
population standard deviation divided by our margin of error. If, this is a key note, if our population standard deviation is unknown, you can estimate it by using the sample standard deviation given the sample size is at least 30 members. Now, also, you always have to round up. So when you're finding a sample size, you always have to round up, no matter what the decimal place is. And another key note is you have to first find that critical value for the Z score. So you have to find that critical value. So suppose that you were interested in the average number of units that students take at a two-year college to get an associate's degree. Suppose you wanted to find a 95% confident interval with a margin of error of 0.5 for a mean known for a mean for a population mean knowing our standard deviation is 10. How many people should we ask? So in this case, I know that the level of confidence is 0.95, and I need to find that critical value for that level of confidence, which means I have to incorporate that tail. So my level of confidence is 0.95. I do 1 minus 0.95, which is going to be 0.05, and I need to divide that by 2, which gives me 0 0.025. When I look up the critical value, again, you're going to be using that second VARS button. You find your critical value, and it's going to be that z-score. And whether you have the negative 1.69 or the positive 1.69, with that standard deviation of 10, and your R, in this case, is 0.5. We're going to plug it all into the formula. Now, it doesn't matter if you plug in the negative 1.96, or the positive, because we're squaring here, and when you square a negative, it turns to a positive. So you plug in your critical value, you plug in the standard deviation, and you plug in the error. And then you calculate it, and please make sure you square your answer. And you should get 1536.64, and you always have to round up to the nearest whole number. So in this case, you end up with 1537.64 people. Pause and try. So in this case our critical value is that special one. It is the 2.575 or a negative 2.575. Our standard deviation is the 1.4. Our R in this case is 2. When I plug it into the formula, make sure that you square it. You should have gotten 4. Pause and try. So in this case, our critical value is that 1.645 or the negative 1.645. Our standard deviation is 13. Our error is 3. You want to plug it all into the formula, and you should have gotten 51 people.